We want to thank you and we want to glorify you, King of Glory, because, Lord, we are found, Lord, in your house. Lord, in your house there is fullness of joy. And thank you, Jehovah God, because David said it's better to be found in your house than in a thousand other places. And King of Glory, ever, even as we gather, Lord, in your name, King of Glory, we desire that, Lord, you continue to take the center stage. Lord, you continue to have preeminence, Lord, in our lives, Jehovah God. And Lord, this afternoon, Lord, we are expected, Lord, to receive from you, Jehovah God, even as you instruct us and teach us in the way we should go. Even counseling us, Lord, with your loving eye upon us. Be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's give a clap offering to the Lord, even as we take our seats. And thank you, praise and worship team, for a superb job. So let's uh, clap to the praise and worship team. May God continue to refresh you to the honor and to the praise of his holy name. My name is uh, Stephen Jaroge Solomon, and Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. And I uh, thank God that uh, I'm a son in this house, and I want to take this opportunity to thank our bishop and our mom, Pastor Harris, and the pastoral team for uh, granting me this opportunity so that I am able to share the word of God. And I'm also excited to see each one of you uh, so that we may be blessed together. And even as I share uh, the message that I'm going to share with you, uh, it's, uh, I pray that it's also going to minister to me. And as I've been looking, yes, this is the year of mounting up. And mounting up is all about changing levels. And one of the areas that I have been desiring that uh, we are going, all of us, uh, to grow is in our, in our fellowships. So I uh, have a message entitled, uh, Developing Meaningful Relationships by Enhancing Fellowship. Developing Meaningful Relationship by Enhancing Fellowship. And uh, have been, uh, uh, this year, the theme of the, the song that, uh, that has been in my heart is the one which has been sung by William Irima, which is sung, He is your daughter, Yangu. Pari Niko, so changing levels, and that has been my desire that even in my Christian work, even in my relationship with God, that I'm going to a different level to the honor and to the praise of His holy name. Bwana atukuzwe. So uh, Christianity is relational. Christianity is relational, and this refers to both the vertical, uh, the vertical relationship where we relate with our Lord Jesus Christ, and the horizontal, where we relate with fellow Christians. Thus, enhancing fellowship becomes essential for each one of us. So, mounting up is all about changing levels, and you need to enhance our, uh, our fellowship so that we may be able, both with God and with man. And I remember some time back I had Bishop Mark uh, reminding us uh, what fellowship is all about. And he was saying that fellowship, uh, fellowship means, in other words, means pharaohs in one ship, uh, in one ship, pharaohs in one ship. So to kuwa kwa merimoja, pharaohs in one ship. And he was saying that the good news is that Jesus is the captain of this ship. Because he made the waters, the seas, the oceans, and the winds, and even is the one who gave the knowledge even to build the ships. He knows the names and the depths of the seas and the, the oceans and directs the, the, the directions of the wind. That is our God, because great is our Lord, exalted in power. His understanding has no limit. We develop meaningful relationship when we acquaint ourselves with those we relate to by spending quality time with them. And uh, today, as I have said, we are going to review these twofold fellowships that we, can, uh, we need to enhance. And the first one is the vertical uh, relationship, and that is fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And every time we sing this song, make room for two, you and, uh, you and I, Jesus. That is what has been coming, uh, uh, that, that's what has been, uh, continued to be ministered. Yes, we are many, even today we came from different places. But even when we are sitting here, we all have, our, our, uh, we need to develop our relationship with God on one-to-one -one basis. The word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 and 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, verse 7 and 9, says that so, uh, so, uh, uh, so that you come short in all gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, 
that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. That's key. God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So God is faithful uh, by whom you are, you are called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. And we will be blameless because of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us through his death and resurrection. All who believe in the Lord Jesus will be considered blameless when Jesus Christ returns and let's continue to keep the big picture in mind. That we only remain blameless when we continue uh, to appreciate and identify ourselves with the, with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we are, to, we are who we are today because of the grace of God in our lives. And maybe you have been walking with Jesus. You have a relationship with Jesus. Because it's important that God is not only your God, Jesus is not only your God, but he's your Lord. There is a difference. So, but when you make him not only your God, but your are, Lord, you are then it means that you, you, you give him space in your life. That's why we are saying make room for two, you and I, Jesus, that you have a place in your life. And, as when you, and you continued in that, uh, in that walk, yes, you say that this is my relationship. I have this unique relationship with my God. And the scripture in Luke 10, verse 38 to 42, Luke 10, 38 to 42, so this is where Jesus visited uh, Mary and mother. And the scripture says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Mother opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Mother was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Mother, Mother, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed. All indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. So brethren, when you desire to sit at the feet of Jesus. When you desire to have a fellowship with him. Your life will never be the same. And it will have it, it, eternal impact. So it's good. Yes, there are many things you are doing. But there is that one thing that you may desire to do, to be at the feet of Jesus, where you, you, you continue to make him Lord and Savior, and you continue to commune with him because he's always listening to us. Mary had a revelation of Jesus. He knew he had wisdom and favor with God. I don't know how you view the, God, uh, the, the Lord Jesus. I don't know uh, the relationship, uh, or, or if you have asked about him, who is he to you? But this day, even as I stand before you, I can confess and declare that indeed he's my Lord, he's my rock, and he's my redeemer. So I don't know about you, but that's what I can testify of him. Wise men from the east recognized him as king and gave him kingly gifts. And that you can be able to find it in Matthew chapter 2. So, uh, uh, so let's read Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, one and 2. And now, uh, yes. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, uh, but now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, verse 2, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now let's go to verse 9 to 11. When they heard the king, uh, when they heard the king, they departed. That's after they had talked to, the, uh, to Herod. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they, uh, when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with the ma Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Fell down and worshipped him. And they had uh, opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frank uh, incense, and uh, myth. So, we, uh, so these wise men gave these expensive gifts as well the acknowledgement uh, of a future king. So they gave him those gifts because they came to him because they recognized him as king and brought with him, uh, brought with them kingly gifts. 
So I don't know if you recognize him as, your, as, as the Lord and King in your life. Because if you do, then you will spare nothing. You will you, not, not spare anything even when you are, you are serving him. And, but you can, you can be with him and you fail not to recognize of who he is or uh, who, of who he actually is in your life. In Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 18, there were two, two uh, on the road to uh, Emmaus, we see two disciples, Cleophas and his colleague, and they were joined by Jesus and had fellowship, but they did not have revelation. So yeah, now behold, two of them were uh, traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of, uh, of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. They did not know him, uh, up to verse 18. And, and he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose, uh, whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And then we can move to verse 28 to 31. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. Uh, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as they sat at the table with them, that he took bread, breast it, uh, breast and broke it, and gave to them. Verse 31. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew, he, uh, and they knew him. He vanished from their sight. So we see these are... Uh, two disciples who had been with Jesus. Yes, they were having fellowship with him. They were traveling with him after his resurrection. But uh, the sad thing is that they did not recognize him. So maybe even you, you have a relationship with Jesus this morning. But even in your walk, you do not know the value or, or do not recognize who really you are, you are, you are walking with. And maybe uh, because of that, you are still walking in equity. Uh, maybe you are still uh, uh, looking at life, uh, carrying life very casually. May that be not your portion in the name of Jesus. So the sacred place is a place of intimacy, where we grow our intimacy with God. Having a sacred place is an intentional decision to es establish a routine that includes time with God, reading or studying his word, meditating on his word, praying to him, listening to him, worshipping him, and, uh, and continually tuning our hearts to him. Because what is unique with our God, he understands the language of the heart. So I don't know even what you are going through this morning, but you can know, maybe even words cannot speak. But one thing about our God is that he understands the language of the heart. So if you continue, if you continue communing with him, he's able to understand even the, even the language of the heart because he's a good God. Praise the name of the Lord. There are two levels of knowing God. So the first thing, you can know God's deeds. You can know God, uh, so knowing God is two levels. You can know God by knowing his deeds, what he does. But the second level, you can know uh, by knowing God's ways or his character. So that is the second level, where you know who he is. Not what he does, but who he is. There is a distinction. And my desire for you and me is that we are, going, we are not only go, going to know what our God does, but know who, uh, who the Lord is in our lives. And even in our different situations, even when we face uh, tough situations. And uh, we know that Moses was, uh, was a friend of God. And he made uh, a very profound prayer, which I, I always identify with. In Exodus 13, verse that, uh, 33, verse 13. And in the Amplified Version, he says, Now therefore I pray to you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways, so that I may know you, becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with you, recognizing and understanding your ways more clearly, and, and that I may find grace and favor in, uh, in your sight. And consider also that this, is, this nation is your people. So this was the heart cry of Moses. He, he desired to know 
uh, to know the ways of the Lord. And our God is faithful. If you, if, uh, whatever desire you have, and maybe that is your desire, to know the, the ways of the Lord, which are higher than his deeds. So, so, so if, if that is your desire, God fulfilled that prayer to Moses because in Psalms 103 verse 7, the scripture says, he revealed his, charac uh, he revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the, is uh, to the people of Israel. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. In the NIV it says, he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. So, it shows that God answered the prayer to Moses. And uh, my prayer for you and me is that you'll know not only uh, his, his, his deeds, but you'll desire to know his ways. Like Moses, Job knew the character of God. He knew his ways. And this is evident from his response after receiving very uh, devastating news. He fell down in worship to God. And very briefly, let's look at Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. In verse 1 it says, In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was brameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. This man was brameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. That was the testimony that was there for Job. Let's go to verse 8. We see God himself uh, giving a testimony about Job. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is brameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. And later we see that uh, there are a lot of, uh, we can, uh, we are, let, uh, let's move up to verse 11. Uh, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you, put, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that, uh, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the ranch. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely cast you to, to, uh, uh, to your face. This was the challenge that the devil was giving to, uh, uh, to God about Job, that he will surely cast him. So it was a test whether Job would, uh, would worship God, even in those trying times. Uh, but uh, let's look at uh, Job's uh, response. Uh, in your own time, you are going to read the rest of the verses. Let's go to verse 20 to 22. We see what happened after he received a lot of de devastating news. He said, at this point, Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship. He fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. So one thing here we see is that uh, the response of Job, Job, because he knew the character of God, even in the desperate situation he was in, he could dare, even in that moment, worship God. He did not worship God because of what God had done, but because or he knew who God was. And that's why this morning, my challenge to you, yes, even as you continue in your walk, uh, in your walk of faith, so do you have the revelation of who Jesus is in your life? Have you made him as Lord and Savior of your life? Because even in those trying times, you, uh, you have no other, uh, otherwise but just to, uh, uh, to respond by, uh, by worshiping him. And David, I write David, and in Psalms 18, verse 28 to 31, uh, in the NIV, it usually says that, O oh Lord, you keep my lamp, uh, my lamp burning. You turn my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. But with you, my God, I can scale over a wall. So, yes, he's there to help you. He's able to turn your darkness into light. With your help, he's able, with his help, he's, he's able, you're able to advance against a troop or that obstacle which is before you. But with, his, with, with him, you can scale over, uh, over every wall. So even when you are passing through those trying times, that is uh, our God for you. Knowing the character or ways of God will bring rest and peace in, in, into our troubled world. And God knows we face a troubled world. When we know God intimately, you learn that no matter how bad the problem of the situation is, God is not only necessary, God is enough. God is not only necessary, but God is enough. And that's why I like, I like this, uh, this song. Una tutosha, buona. Una tutosha. 
Kosha Bwana Ninajua Bwana Unatutosha Bwana anatutosha kwa hali kwa hata kwa hizo hali ngumu Bwana anatutosha And my question for you this morning Do you know God for yourself Do you know God for yourself Do you, uh, I, 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 I thank God that I no longer just talk about God of my parents but today I talk about God who I have personally encountered and my desire is that for each one of us that we'll have our personal encounters with our God that you say that yes this is my God not because of what he has done but you recognize him because of who he is and that's why even the Israelites uh, in 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 Isaiah, in Isaiah 12 from verse 2 you are saying that behold god is my salvation i shall trust and not be afraid for you jehovah you are my strength and my song you have become my salvation he is our salvation praise the name of the lord so let's go to the second uh, uh, the second bit there is horizontal relationship where we enhance fellowship with the fellow christians fellowship with fellow christians the word of god in uh, Hebrews 10:24 to 25 uh, uh, reminds us that and let's consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you you see the day approaching so not giving up uh, the coming together uh, uh, of brethren as some have are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day uh, the, the day approaching and in uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 4 9 to 12 uh, Ecclesiastes 4 9 to 12 uh, the scripture says that two are better than one because they have a good return of their labor if either of them falls down one can help the other but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them to, uh, 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 to help them up also if two uh, ride down together they will keep warm but how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strength is not quickly broken. So even as we fellowship with one another, let's continue to make God the, the center stage, even in our fellowship. Let's continue to, ma to make him our senior partner. And that even when we come together, let's always come together in the name of the Lord. Reaching out to each other, or creating a rapport is important in order to connect. So you need, we need to connect with others. And that is something that when you value, you value others, you'll be able to connect with them. You'll be able to reach out to them. And that is, uh, 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 that is important uh, for each one of us. And maybe, for example, after, after sharing the, uh, the grace, or maybe when you come out of the service, maybe the person you share, uh, you share the, grace, uh, the, 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 the grace with, you can decide to know that person. And maybe you can just introduce yourself and say, oh, in fact, I'm Stephen Jerobe. And that person you tell you, so you're able to create a rapport. And uh, that way you're able to connect. Or maybe you can be, be introduced to them or you reach out to the pastors to connect you to the various group. We thank God that in this church, we have a lot of uh, 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 groups. We have the home cells, uh, which meet, meet in the course of the week. We have the various networks. Those are the main network, the, red, the ladies network, the youth. And, and all other ministries. And you, you also you can be involved in the, the various ministries because in those ministries, then you, the, the people are able to come together. However, it's better to be alone than in a company of bad people. But because you know that uh, bad, 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 bad morals corrupt, uh, you're you, you easily to be corrupted. But we know that when you are directed even to go to fellowship in those home cells, because the people who are there, the church has vetted them and they are known they are good people. So you, are, you, you can be assured that you are meeting the right people. So you are in the right forum. And you grow even as you, you, help, you, you become a blessing to others. In fellowshiping, we need to lift one another. We need to lift one another, sharpen one another, encourage and give warmth to each other, one another. And that's why uh, the scripture in Psalms 133 verse 1 and 3 says that, uh, 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 th that how good and present it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the uh, bread, running down on Aaron's bread, down to the corner of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion. 
for there the Lord bestows his blessing even right forevermore. God commands his blessing. So where there is unity, when people come together in unity, there God commands a blessing. So as DCIKZ, we are not only a church with cells, but we are a cell-based church. So we do not only meet on Sunday, but in the course of the week, we, uh, the, the church continues where we meet, uh, we meet uh, on Monday for prayers, on Wednesday for times of refreshing or Bible study, and in home cells where we are able to connect. And as we gather, we must always gather in the name of the Lord. And I would like to pose a question to each one, uh, to each one uh, 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 which I would try to explain. Why be part of a cell? Why be part of a cell? Remember we are talking about enhancing our fellowships with fellow Christians. Why be part of a cell? So the first point is that in a cell, you get a family or a, bre uh, or a belonging. Uh, in a cell, you get a family or a belonging. The scripture in Psalms 68 verse 5, what was read to us by Pastor Brian, is that God sets the, the, the roundry or solitary in families. That is the essence. That's why we need to come together because there is a sense of belonging. Psalms 68 verse 5. God sets the solitary in family or the roundry in, in family. Number two, there is power of unity. And we saw that when you are reading Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to, uh, to 12. And uh, the other scripture that in your own time that you can be able to, to look at is Genesis uh, 11, verse 3 to, uh, uh, 3 to 7. And this was the time for building the Tower of, of Babel. And here, uh, uh, it, uh, it, it says that then the Lord came, uh, but the Lord came down in verse 5 to see the city, the city and the tower the people are building. Verse 6, and the Lord... Uh, and the Lord said, if one people speaking the same language have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible to them. Come, let's go down and confuse their languages so it will not be, uh, they will not understand each other. So there is power of unity that if people come together, so there is be nothing which will be impossible with them. People, because people are able to encourage one another, people are able to sharpen one another to the honor and to the praise of, uh, of his holy name. The third point why you, you need to be part of a cell or any network is we are blessed to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. Uh, and the scripture, uh, in your own time, you look at Genesis 12, Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3. And uh, here, uh, God was blessing Abraham and he told him, I'll bless you and you'll be a blessing. And that's why I believe that the blessing for you, uh, the, 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 the desire for, the will of God for you and me is that you may be a blessing to many. And God is going to cause many to be a blessing to us. So we should not be uh, like uh, reservers whereby uh, we, uh, we store the blessings of God. But we need to be channels through which God is going to use uh, to, uh, to bless others. Uh, and uh, I remember a testimony, I think it's Pastor Harris who I had sharing or one of the pastors. And uh, he was talking about how people even go to, even to fellowship or even to those networks. Namutu anasema ombewe unspoken need. Na unajua ukisema unspoken need, ni kusema hakuna mtu anajua ni nini. Na pengine jawabu yako inyeza kuwa iko katikati ya awa watu munashiriki nao. And it, it is said about this lady uh, who, uh, who, who the children had been uh, sent away from school. Again, um, uh, not only sent uh, from school, ata nyumba yao ilikuwa imefungwa. And the case was very desperate. Lakini yeye akaenda kwa ushirika kwa sababu alikuwa faithful kuenda kwa ushirika. Na siku hiyo akasema, mimi niko na hitaji. Na hitaji ile niko nayo watoto wangu wamefukuzwa shule na hata nyumba tumefungiwa. Na uh, watu wa, wa fellowship wakaomba na wakasema the grace. Lakini kabla atoke mama moja akamwambia mama fulani subiri kidogo. Hawa wengine wakatoka, akamwambia uskajari. Uh, watoto kufukuzwa shure si shida, shure furani mimi ndiyo mwenye hiyo shure. So watoto wakuje na hiyo uniform wakonae. Jambo ya pili, hata msaada ya, 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 ya kufungua nyumba ikapatikana hapo kwa home cell. Kwa sababu waliweza kuonge, kuongea. So because we are blessed to be a blessing. And it's good to remember that the role of sowing and reaping. Because the word of God uh, says in Genesis 8.22 that as long as the are then doers, seed time and harvest time will never uh, cease. But yes, we have been called to be a blessing one unto another. But the question I would like to pose to you and pose to myself, are you a blessing or a Buddha? Are you a blessing or a Buddha? So pengine, 
wewe wakati uko na hitaji ndio unafikia wengine that's when you reach out to others but the other time you don't want to be there to stand with others so the question that you need to ask yourself and i need to ask myself are you a blessing or a bother some people are mean ni wale wanaitwa mkono birika si tunajua keto zile za zamani ni lazima uinamishe ni lazima uinamishwe ndio ile kitu uko naye uh, uh, ifanye ni tusiwe mkono birika let's purpose to be a blessing number four. Uh, so even as you go to the uh, 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 why uh, join a cell you join a cell because you see yourself as the planting of the lord you see yourself as the planting of the lord and because you are the, you see yourself as the planting of the lord you purpose to bloom and to flourish and in your own time you can look at psalms 92 verse 12 psalms 92 verse 12 uh, to 13 and jeremiah 29 verse 4 to 7 and number five, we prosper when we honor delegated authority we prosper when we honor delegated authority and the scripture in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 this was king jehoshaphat who said I believe in the lord your god and you shall be established and believe in his servants uh, 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 so, uh, yeah, okay we can read because it's there yeah uh, uh, so uh, the rose are in the morning and went into the wilderness of uh, uh, tekoa and they went out jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and you inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe in his prophets and you shall prosper so when we honor his delegated authority we prosper so huyo sasa reader ambaye amewekwa hapo amewekwa hapo ndio awe baraka kwako bishop haezi kuwa kila pahali lakini amewekwa hapo ndio awe baraka kwako let's go now to the challenges a few challenges hizi ni kupitia haraka haraka so challenges that yes I, have, i did not tell you but i have been I'm one of the zone readers here i've been a cell reader and i know some of the challenges that we uh, we as cell members uh, even as cell readers we face One of the things one of the challenges that you find in cells is the issue of selfishness selfishness or lack or uh, and lack of empathy selfishness and lack of empathy hiyo ni mtu anataka kushughulikiwa wakati ule yako na shida lakini yeye hataki kuwa baraka kwa wengine akisikia kuko na pahali kitu ya kutoa yeye anahepa na tukiongea kuhusu empathy we are not talking about sympathy but you are trying to say put yourself in somebody else's shoes ujiulize kama ni mimi napitia hii jambo napitia ningetaka msaada umekaa namna gani kwa sababu uh, uh, ukiwa hivyo uh, utakuwa uh, utakuwa baraka the other um, challenge is in accessibility or unavailability in accessibility or unavailability hiyo ni mtu yeye ata, ataki kukanyangwa vidore na watu eh? yeye yeah, anakuwa ni kama landmine so hata anakuazika haraka sana so so in accessibility or an availability and the other one is lack of commitment lack of commitment and me i usually say that there is a difference between commitment and interest when you are interested in something you only do it when it's convenient but when you are committed to something you do it whether it's convenient or not convenient because you know you value it and i like what mom pastor is always reminds us that we always have time for what we value so when you don't go even for those meetings the network or the sales meeting it shows that you do not value them because you always have time for what we value kama unaenda kuingine mbona hiyo unakosa kwenda hata hakuna apology and the final challenge and just a few of them is biasness biasness we despise others but i like what the scripture in job 36 verse 5 says that uh, 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 god is mighty and he that is job 36 verse 5 god is mighty and he despises no man god is mighty and firm in his purpose so Uh, so you may be biased concerning that person but the purposes of god concerning that person will come to pass sometimes you despise those people who are your destined helpers naman uh, uh, we know that uh, naman was assisted by the house help is only because the house help and the, and the, and, the, and the, the lady master at least were, they had a rapport they could be able to talk and that's where the solution came we saw even even the servant to soul when they went to search for donkey Uh, we, you see how helpful that uh, servant was that is first samuel chapter 9 5 to 10 yeye ndio hata alikuwa anamwambia tusikarudi kuko na there is a man of god kuko na mtumishi wa mungu na hata wakati ule samuel alimwambia sina kitu ya kupeleka akamwambia usikajari niko na kitu tunaweza patia mtumishi wa mungu because he was a destiny helper so 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 let's not be, uh, despise that maybe the members or even the servants of god and finally uh, there are three characters that you will find in a, in a church or in a cell three characters na hiyo ndio tutafunga naye 
na intaenda marathon kwa sababu time is not on my side and these are like to read uh, the book of uh, John chapter 3 John chapter 3 John chapter 3 niwekewe hiyo in the amplified uh, okay nasema the elder of the church addresses this letter to the beloved and esteemed uh, Gaius who I love in truth Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. For I was greatly pleased when some of, of the brothers came from the time to time and testified of your faithfulness to the truth of the gospel message. That is how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my spiritual children are living their lives in truth. Verse 5, be, uh, be, uh, Beloved, you are acting faithfully in what you are uh, providing for the brothers, and especially when they are strangers. And they have testified before the church of your love and friendship. You, uh, you will do well to assist them and send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. Verse 7, for these traveling missionaries went out for the sake of the name of Christ, accepting nothing in the way of assistance from the Gentiles. So we ought to support such people, welcoming them as guests and providing for them so that we may be fellow workers for the truth, that is for gospel message of salvation. I wrote something to the church, but Diodephis, uh, Dio, uh, who has to put himself first, does not accept uh, what uh, we say and refuses to recognize my authority. Uh, for this reason, if I come, I'll call attention to what he's doing unjustly accusing us with wicked words and unjustified charges and not satisfied with this he refuses to receive the missionary brothers himself also for forbids those who want to welcome them and put them out of the church verse 11 behold do not imitate this what is evil but imitate what is good the one who practices good except uh, exhibiting godly character moral courage and personal integrity is of god the one who practices uh, or permits or, uh, or tolerates evil has not seen God. He has no personal experience with him and does not know him at all. The last one, verse 12. Demetrius the has received a good testimony and commendation from everyone and from the truth, the standard of God's word itself. We add our testimony. Speak well of him and you know that our testimony is true. In Ire Kuguzia too, you just need the first character to naona anaitua Gaius. That is in verse 3, uh, in, in, in verse 3, uh, and is commended for four things. I would like to cite this, uh, Gaius, uh, that is G-A-I-U-S, is commended for, he's walking in the truth, he's walking in the truth, that is verse 3, he's walking in the truth. The, the second thing uh, is commended, his hospitality to traveling uh, mission, uh, pre preachers of the gospel, that is verse 5, 6, and 8. And um, the other thing he's commended for, he's commended for faithfulness. And number four, that is verse five. And, and uh, the fourth point, his, his love. So that's what can be said about the first character. He's, he's walking in the truth, his hospitality to traveling preachers of the gospel, his faithfulness, his love. I don't know if you are that kind of a person, but that's a good person. But uh, let's see uh, the other person uh, called Dio Dephis. Uh, and is mentioned in, in only two verses. That is verse 9 and 10, or, or the third letter of John. And we have uh, the following statement made about him, and they are not good. The first one, in fact, these are, are six of them. The first one is that he loves, him, uh, he lo he loves to be first. He loves to be first. Only those verses, 9 and 10. He loves to be first. He refuses to welcome apostles in the church. He maliciously spreads gossip about men of God. He withholds hospitality from other believers. He requires others to follow his poor example. And the, the sixth one, he excommunicates anyone who crosses him. I don't know if you are that kind of a person. I would not like to be that, that person. And the, the that person is on one verse, that is verse 12, is called uh, uh, Demetrius. Demetrius, whom uh, John mentions in verse 12, is likely the man who delivered the epistle to uh, Gaiusias the recipient. John says that Demetrius, that is a Christian of good repute, was well known for two things. For his commitment to the truth and uh, he, uh, has a well-deserved praise from all who know him. I would desire to be that kind of a person. And as I conclude, 
We therefore need to be deliberate or intentional in enhancing fellowship with both God and fellow Christians for us to mount up, to change our levels. It, need, it needs to be deliberate. When we know his ways or his character, you cannot miss to know his deeds. Unfortunately, you can know his deeds and fail to know his ways. So may that not be your portion. I will, de I will desire to know the ways of the Lord. Because when I know his ways or his character, I will not miss out to see his deeds. And that's why I ask the question, do you know God for yourself? Because if you know God for yourself, you will be able to testify, see the hand of God in your life. You continue to see the hand of God in your life. Even when you are passing through those trying times, you see the hand of God uh, in your life. Because he says that surely he breaks the righteous, he surrounds them with his favor as with a shield. Let's, uh, let's, uh, uh, let us also always remember we are blessed to be a blessing. Therefore, let's purpose to be a blessing to others, not to be a Buddha. Remember, we ask, are you a blessing or are you a Buddha? The only debt, debt we all have is the debt of love to one another. Kama pako na deni ambaye tuko na nae, kila mtu mmoja wetu ambaye ako hapa, ni deni ya upenda. The debt of love. Hmm? And here we are talking about the agape love. That is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, and this agape love, love is not so much of emotion, but having unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best for other believers. Seeking the best for others. Usuya kama huyo tumeona, ambaye he always has to put himself first. That he will be able to put others first. So that, that so you'll not be selfish. And uh, that debt of love, we can see that scripture, the last scripture in Romans 13, verse 8, in the Amplified. It says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love and seek the best for one another. For he who unselfishly, unselfishly loves his neighbor has fulfilled the essence of the law relating to one's, uh, to, to one's uh, fellow man. So you, you may be, in your own time, you'll be able to read, I think, up to verse 10. So that is the only debt that we have. And because of that, uh, that debt, then let's continue to purpose to be a blessing one and to another, to the honor and to the praise of his holy name. And I don't know if you are there in this service, or maybe you are watching us live. My question for you is, have you, uh, have you decided to make, because it's supposed to be deliberate, to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior? That he'll not only be your God, but you purpose that you be a savior. Because the scripture says that, like, for Christ died once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. So if you are there uh, in this service and you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, maybe you can, you can just lift your hand wherever you are, and I'm going to see it. And even if you are watching, if you are watching uh, as life, there are those numbers which are there you can be able to write and indicate that you are saved and you'll be given the right uh, assistant and God is going to, to bless you. So even as you continue in this new week, my desire, may you uh, continue to develop meaningful relationship even as you, by enhancing fellowship. Fellowship with God and fellowship with fellow Christians. Let's, uh, let's pray. Our Father and our God in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to glorify you, Jehovah God, for your word, Jehovah God, that Lord has ministered to us, King of glory. How I pray that Heavenly Father, that Lord, your word, you have a praise, Lord, in our hearts, Jehovah God. That Heavenly Father, Lord, you continue, Lord, to desire to know your ways, King of glory. Because, Lord, we know that when we know your ways, King of glory, we not miss out to know your deeds, Jehovah God. And that Heavenly Father, Lord, that Lord, you help us to know God for ourselves. That King of glory, we testify, Lord, of your love and your faithfulness, Jehovah God. And Heavenly Father, Lord, our good example, Lord, others will see and say, yes, we can see God in his life. Because you are always at work, Lord, in our lives, King of glory. And Heavenly Father, Lord, you have blessed us to be a blessing. Lord, you have planted us, Lord, in here in DCIKZ, Lord, and in different other places, Jehovah God. That, Lord, you may be a blessing one to another, Jehovah God. How I pray, King of glory, that, Lord, you help us, you give us the grace to value each other, Jehovah God. That you will not despise others, King of glory. Because as your heart has reminded that, Lord, you are mighty. And, Lord, you despise no man. You are mighty, Lord, and firm, Lord, in your purpose. May that which, Lord, you have purpose, Lord, in our lives, may you cause it to come to pass in full and without any form of delay, Jehovah God. Even as you connect us, Lord, to our destiny, help us, Jehovah God. And that, Lord, in this season of mounting up, Jehovah God, Lord, you not meet, meet, miss to mount up, Jehovah God, in every area of our lives, even especially, Lord, in our relationship, to the honor and to the praise of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.